Let's become a country boy and let's add custom crops to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found us back in Telegram's one and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom crop over here to our Minecraft mod. Now, as you'll find that this is actually going to be more straightforward than you might think. Specifically, though, it will include some things about properties, right? Namely, here in this case, basically block state properties. It's going to be very interesting indeed. Now, for a custom crop, the first thing we're going to need is a custom block class. So we're going to start in block custom package. We're going to right click new Java class called in this case, the radish crop block. There we go. Now, this will extend from the crop block class and we're going to see this. Let's hover over this, create constructor matching super, and we can actually go into the crop class, control left click on this, and you can see basically the ideas, the crop block itself is, for example, used for wheat, right? And you can see that the max age here is seven, then there is an integer property called age, and that one basically goes, if we go all the way down over here, basically from zero to seven, that's the whole idea. And there's a couple of other things here as well that are quite interesting to take a look at, but we're going to see in a second. Now, one thing we could do is if we click on crop block, control H, you can also see, for example, the beat root block, the carrot block, and so on and so forth. And they basically have a couple of different fields over here. In this case, max age is three, and that's actually going to be the same age that we have as well. So you could, in theory, then say, well, actually, we're going to take the beat root block to extend from. That would totally be fine. Like that, you could do that, and that would be, in theory, actually totally valid and we can even do this but for the sake of argument we'll keep it with the crop block now obviously it is important when you have your custom crop that you know how many stages that you're going to have and then obviously the numbers might change so first of all we're going to make the max age property over here which is going to be three and then we're going to have a public static final integer property so this is basically the age that is then saved on the block state itself integer property that create the name here is going to be age and there's going to be the minimum of zero and the maximum of three a couple of methods have to be overridden there is no way around that the first one is the get block state definition method where we're going to call builder.add and then add the age property very straightforward this just makes sure obviously that the actual block state knows about this property here then we're going to get the max age as a method over here where we're going to return max age then we're going to get the get age property method where we will return the simply the age property over here and then the other thing that we desperately need is the uh, get base seed id and that will return something that we haven't added yet so we're simply going to make a deliberate error here in this case now there is one and a half more things let's say that we could add so once again if we go back to the beetroot block you can see that there is a voxel shape called shape by age and the idea is that when you hover over a block then obviously there is an outline usually if you have a full block there is an outline in 16 by 16 by 16 voxels but in the case of let's say crops they change the outline based on their age so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to copy this over as always of course all of the code is available down below and what we're going to do is i'm actually just going to copy over the the exact thing right here so i'm going to just going to say hey this is a new voxel shape and what you'll basically find is if i format this just a little bit differently the idea is we're basically going to go for the following right so obviously h can be something from zero to three so the first one would be zero where well we basically have a tiny box over here and then it grows a little bit each time and to implement this we will then want to override the get shape method very straightforward so we're going to override this as well get shape and this is the get shape method right here and we're going to return the shape by age array and passing in state dot get value of age in this case and you can see this is basically we can also do this dot get age and then do the state but i'm pretty sure if i were to look at this it's literally the same thing so it, it should not matter this should all work totally fine and that is the basic crop block done of course without any seed here in this case but let's first of all jump to the mod blocks to actually register our custom block here so this is a public static final deferred block of type block in this case and this is going to be our radish underscore crop equal to the register block method calling this radish underscore crop as well and then a supplier of a new radish crop block very importantly here we're going to do block behavior dot properties dot of full copy blocks dot wheat now this is going to be totally fine and this is going to work if you are in 1.21.3, this is not going to work because wheat has a different 
number and a different age. So honestly, we should just do beetroots anyway. I think that that's going to be fine. This might work if we use beetroots here in 1.21.3. However, I'm not sure. So, you know, just be aware that this might throw an error um, after you go, go into the game. So just keep that in mind. Regardless, though, we have the radish crop added right here. And we can go on to the items because, well, now we need, obviously, a seed item because that is going to be quite interesting. Uh, and additionally, we can, because we have a seed item, there's actually one thing that we want to change right here. And that is when we think about when we're registering a block, right? What are we doing? Well, when we register a block, we get this block to register it, and then we register a block item. But wait a second. What is the block item for a crop? It's the seeds. Therefore, what we're going to need to do here is we want to say blocks that register because we don't want a automatically generated block item for this because the block item are the seeds. So we're going to add those right now in the mod items class. It's going to be public static final, a deferred item in this case, and of course of type item. It's going to be the radish underscore seeds equal to items dot register. It's going to be the radish underscore seeds. And this is going to be a supplier of a new item name block item in this case. First parameter being mod blocks dot radish crop dot get. Second parameter, just new item properties. Nothing spectacular needed to be added here. And we can proceed, first of all, adding this to the creative mode tab, as this is a thing that I may or may not forget sometimes. No, I would never do this. <laughs> and then we can go back to the crop block again, where we simply return mod items start radish seeds right here in the get base seed ID. We can then close the crop block over here. The mod blocks, that's done as well. Mod items is done. Creative mode tab is done. Absolutely fantastic. We can then go on to data gen as, of course, we require a couple of things here. The first one is going to be the loot table provider where I will copy over what we're going to need and you will understand why in just a second. So usually when you have crops, you obviously have a little bit of a different way that this drops because you need to check for the block state property to be fully grown, right? So I'm going to copy this over. Of course, as always, all of this is going to be available to you down below in the description in the GitHub repository. So you can basically see we're making a loot item condition builder saying, OK, this particular loot item has a condition. What is the condition? Well, first of all, it has to have a block state property. The radish block has to have that. And that property has to be the radish crop lock age. And the value of it has to be three. Otherwise, we're not even bothering with dropping anything. Or rather, we are, but that's going to be just be the seeds. So you can see the first one here is the builder, which we're going to pass into the create crop drops method. Quite a hard thing to say here. And we can actually see that if we hover over this, the first one is the crop block itself, then the grown crop item. So the radish is what needs to drop when this particular thing is fully grown. Then you have the seeds item, which drops even if it's not fully grown. However, they might be additional ones that drop once it is grown. If you want a completely custom method here for your drops, highly recommend to once again, control left click into the block loot sub provider. Take a look at this method. It is a little bit crazy to read, but basically you can take a look at this, change it up however you would like. And there we go. That is the loot table. So that's the first thing in that case. And of course, we still also need a block state provider entry over here. And that one is just the tiniest bit more complicated because what I'm going to have is a custom method with actually two custom methods. Now, the reason why we have those is simply because there is no method available to us at this moment in time. So if I were to say crop, or if I say, you know, even weed wouldn't work, right? So if I do weed, it doesn't work. Bush block doesn't work. So there sadly isn't anything. Once again, uh, the methods that are probably you know, available, they just aren't available to us modders. So we're going to copy over the two helper methods. Once again, we can simply get those and you can see this is the crop make crop method as well as the states method both of those are needed and we can see oh the get age property what we actually need to do is make this public nothing to worry about so when we make this public there we go all of the different uh, issues are gone and then we can literally just call make crop passing in the mod block start this is the radish crop dot get dot cast i'm going to cast this to a crop block Otherwise, it will not know what it is. And then we have this. Then we're going to do the second parameter. It's going to be radish, radish, underscore crop, underscore stage, stage, making sure we write this correctly. And the texture name is the same, radish, underscore stay, a crop, 
underscore stage. There we go. Once again, all of this is also available to you down below. So this simply makes sure that the crop is generated correctly. The make crop method over here could in theory be reused. Do note though that the states method is right now more or less hard coded for the radish crop block. Now I think you could probably do the crop block. Oh no, you can't because in the crop block itself, the age property method is not available. So that's why I did it like this. Yeah, so this is the only thing that's a little bit of a bummer. In theory, that would mean that yes, for each of the different crops, you would need to make a new states method. Now you could also, of course, you know, extend this a little bit, change it up a little bit, and then you would be good to go as well. But you know, just, just so that you're aware on how this works. With that done, we can go on to the, I believe we need to go to the item model provider. Yes, we do. And we need to add, of course, as a basic item, very straightforward, the seeds, because, well, those are just a basic item in this case. And I believe, if I recall correctly, this should actually be everything we're going to need. We have the loot table all done. That is all done. Yes, in terms of the code, that's all we need. And then, we, of course, going down to the assets. That's not to be missed. Now, because we've chosen the item name block item, we can translate radish seeds over here. However, there is nothing wrong with also adding a block over here. So the radish crop right here, even though in our case, we're never really going to see this. If you have something like Wayla, you know, what am I looking at or any other mod installed, then usually when you hover over the block, it uses the block translation key instead of the, instead of the seeds translation key. So having this, you know, it it's like super easy to add and it just makes it a little bit nicer if something like that is installed. Now we get to the textures, which I will copy over. And those are, of course, also available to you down below for download. This is just going to be radish crop underscore stage zero and so on and so forth. You can see we're starting with this and we're ending with something like this. That's going to be pretty neat indeed. And I believe if I recall correctly, this should basically be everything we're going to need except for one tiny thing and that is going to be making the radish as well as the seeds compostable and that happens with the data map over here because well that is actually very straightforward again so this start builder so in the mod data map provider if you have it if you don't once again you can simply take a look at this class in the description below we want to use the neoforge data maps dot compostables and we want to add mod items dot this is going to be the radish seeds over here dot get ID. And then we're going to make a new compostable. And you can see here, we simply add the chance. Let's say this is going to be, I don't know, 25% chance over here. And then replacing this is a false. And then we can actually even duplicate this line and add the normal radish as well. Maybe with a little bit of a higher chance, something like 45%, it's going to be fine. Obviously, the, the actual numbers, you can always change those up as you wish. But with this done, let's go to data over here. Let's run the data gen. That should be pretty much everything we're going to need. This is going to generate us the loot table, the block state, and the item model JSON files, as well as the block model JSON files, and also the data here for the compostables. So let this run through, and we're going to see if we've made any mistakes, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be good to go. And so much for we're going to be good to go. Reddish seeds is not known because, of course, I've forgotten the seed texture how could i do such a thing this is correct of course we need the seed texture as well let me quickly add this as well which is of course also going to be available for download down below so no worries there at all uh, of course you should not forget this radish underscore seeds dot png and then of course the data gen is also going to properly work and then we have it all right that's going to be basically what we need then We'll see. And there we go. Eight written over here. Absolutely fantastic. And now we can jump into the game and see if it works. All right, friends, I'm back in Minecraft and let's take a look and we can see. Look at this craziness. We've got some radish seeds that we can put down and we can, of course, also bone meal them. And they will have uh, usually they will grow all to the maximum age because bone meal adds like uh, between two and yeah, there you go. So like it, most of the time, they're just going to grow normally uh, immediately up. And if we go to survival, we can even get some radishes and you can see if it's not fully grown. Then it's not going to get us a radish. But if it is, then there we freaking go to get some radishes. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is custom, well, a custom crop, right? Add it to Minecraft. Awesome. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll add a custom bush. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.